That's right, it's time for another Sega Master System vs NES. What better time to pit two consoles against each other other than approximately 25 years after their releases? If they were human, they would be in their prime. Unfortunately for consoles, being a quarter of a century old makes one a senior citizen. This time I'm going to take a look at Sega's classic hit, Shinobi. Shinobi was originally released in arcades in 1987 and was enough of a success to warrant multiple console releases, a parody, and a sequel on the Genesis two years later. Nowadays you can enjoy it on your current generation console on Wii Virtual Console and Xbox Live Arcade. You might be wondering how a hit Sega game made its way onto the NES in the first place. It even says on the Master System box for Shinobi that it's arcade-like action, only from Sega. Thanks to companies like Tengen, who were dedicated to working outside the system, we were given the opportunity to enjoy this series on the NES. Tengen released an unlicensed version of Shinobi for the NES in 1989. The premise of the arcade game was that the Iga clan's children were kidnapped by a group of evil ninjas named Zeke, and it was up to Joe Musashi to single-handedly save and retrieve the scattered children. A level could not be completed without finding every child. As was typical in this era of gaming, the story received some tweaks between its arcade debut and its console releases. In the Master System version of the game, Joe Musashi, the Master Ninja, must battle the Ring of Five who have kidnapped the children of the world's leaders. This is by far a more daunting task than what Joe was faced with in the arcade version. In fact, this is his toughest assignment ever. Meanwhile, the NES version keeps the story from the Master System game, but Joe loses his name and is referred to solely as Master Ninja. When you start up the Master System, you are greeted with a giant ninja face with eyes that jerk from left to right. Then the ninja from the box and the intro screen transforms into… this guy. Seriously, what happened to the cool ninja mask? While the premise of the game is that you are sent to save the world leader's children, unlike the arcade version, you can complete every level without rescuing a single one. I guess saving children is just not as important as killing bad guys. However, it is in your main interest to collect the tied up children, as they give you health, extra lives, power ups for your long and close range weapons, and access to bonus stages. But you can always walk on water, whether you save the children or not. You start off with 3 lives, and while you can gain extra lives, there are absolutely no continues in this game. As you progress, your long range weapon will change from a shuriken to a throwing knife, a bomb, and finally a pistol. That's right, a ninja that fights with a gun. Your short range weapon starts off as your bare fists, but eventually you will gain a Monri Kugari chain. I'm assuming that this is a misspelling of the traditional Japanese chain weapon, the Monri Kigusari. The bonus stages start off easy, but as you progress through the game they become increasingly difficult. You throw shurikens at the oncoming ninjas and try to stop them from getting in your face. When you successfully complete a bonus stage you will gain some ninja magic. You can hold four of these special powers at once. Ninja magic provides a variety of methods for getting out of tight squeezes by destroying enemies with crazy animations, freezing the enemies, making you invincible, ow, well I guess sort of invincible, and allowing you to fly. When looking at the manual, I wonder if they didn't give a screenshot for lightning and tornado magic on purpose, or if they just got lazy. Using the ninja magic is a strange process as well. First, in any given level you must defeat 10 enemies, and only then will the leftmost tile flash, letting you know that you can now use your ninja magic. You must use the ninja magic in the order you received it, and when you want to use it, press and hold button 2, then button 1. The missions are very short, and there are 3-5 to five missions per level with the final mission as a boss battle. Most levels scroll from left to right with an upper and lower plane to traverse, or some simple platforming, but some of the far jumps can be difficult. In the mix there are two vertically based missions, where you must jump up or down through the planes in order to arrive at your destination. You will meet a variety of enemies as you save the world leader's many, many children, some more easy to defeat than others, and some levels begin with enemies actually charging directly at you. Sometimes the only way to survive unscathed is memorization. But the levels aren't very difficult, as there are actually fewer enemies than you would expect. Each boss battle is very different. Ken O oh throws floaty fireballs while you try to hit his face. Next you'll face the helicopter Black Turtle, that somehow contains an infinite amount of lunging ninjas. The fight against Mandara starts off with a destructible wall that will attempt to squash you against the electric current behind you. Then it becomes a giant face that spits rocks at you, one up and one down, until you hit its self-destruct button enough times. 
Mobster is insanely easy, as all you have to do is shoot his head and not allow him to come close to you. Some old reviews of the game give the main villain the name Bois Fu, even though he is only referred to as the Masked Ninja in the game and manual. The Masked Ninja, or Bois Fu, whatever he prefers to be called, has four phases. First, he leaps at you like he's saying Ooga Booga and is only vulnerable when he first touches the ground. Then he becomes a tornado that can only be damaged by a short range weapon. Next, he leaps at you again, and if you're lucky, you'll hit him before he hits the ground and spawns clones of himself. And finally, he starts running at you full speed, and all you have to do is stun him with your short range weapon and continue to pummel him with your long range weapon until he dies. Game over. Yep, that's the real ending. Now for the NES version. And this title screen does not look promising. Just like the Master System version, you don't have to save the children, but you should. In this version, the only weapon you can power up is your long range weapon, which only powers up once, from a shuriken to a bullet. But you still gain ninja magic from the bonus levels, and they are a lot easier on the NES. Basically, the game plays almost exactly the same as the Master System version, but doesn't pull it off as well. The graphics are way below par. The NES was capable of far better. While the backgrounds and characters are pretty laughable, the psychedelic color palette can be entertaining at times. The NES version also has fewer enemies blocking your path, and you can super jump anytime, not just when there's an upper level to jump onto. The vertically based levels have been completely scrapped and replaced by more side-scrolling levels. One problem that can make this game more difficult at some points is the juggling effect. Since you don't have a second of invincibility after taking damage, you can get bounced between enemies and lose multiple bars of health, or even get stuck to an enemy until you die. One improvement in this version of the game is that while the same rules apply as to when you can use your ninja magic, you can select which one you'd like to use out of those that you have gathered thus far, rather than being limited to using only the leftmost tile. The boss battles are basically the same. Except in the Black Turtle fight, you can't see your health, lives, or any of the items that normally appear at the top of the screen. The whole screen is blue. It's just you and the enemies in a strange alternate reality. Also, you don't need to defeat the helicopter, just a determined amount of leaping ninjas. As long as you don't allow yourself to become cornered in a victim of the juggling effect, you should be fine. In the final boss battle, the constantly available super jump can be used to your advantage throughout the entire fight, and the different phases do not have different vulnerabilities. Just jump and shoot until he's a goner. This game does receive bonus points for having the decency to give its players a nice picture to look at upon completing the game, unlike the Master System version. Also, in stark contrast to most crappy NES games, Shinobi isn't very difficult, and so the lack of frustration can make this a fun play. Obviously, the Master System wins this round. This was barely a competition. Before anyone calls foul play for pitting a legit copy of the game against an unlicensed version, let me remind you that there are tons of quality Tengen games, and I was completely unaware that the Tengen version of Shinobi was so far below par before I played it for this review. Besides, it's only fair to inform others of this discrepancy between the two versions of the game, right? Now go pick up the Sega Master System version of Shinobi and happy gaming!